August 8, 1882 was the date of a pivotal event in the Hatfield-McCoy feud. The violence of the Paul Poultry incident grew from a spark ignited from an election day altercation between Tolbert McCoy, who's the son of Randall McCoy, and Elias Hatfield. Then Ellison Hatfield jumped in. The details of the fight vary, it depends on who you ask, but soon two of Tolbert's younger brothers, Farmer and Randolph, jumped into the fight and turned the tide against Ellison Hatfield. Ellison was eventually stabbed more than two dozen times and shot. He hung to life, but he was quickly whisked away to Warm Holler, which is up by Maitland. Devin Winch Hatfield, learning of this, quickly organized a posse to take the boys into the, his possession. It's said that they were kept in a schoolhouse up near Maitland, which we soon uh, plan to make a video on that. We think we know where the location is. But getting back to this, Devil Ants basically said if Ellis and Hatfield survived, they might also. When Ellis and Hatfield died, Devil Ants was responsible for the three boys being taken to the Tug River on the Kentucky side. They were tied to pawpaw trees and they were shot. Merry Christmas, YouTube. How are we today? Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, it's December 24th, I guess, you know, duh, Christmas Eve. Anyway, it's nice cold day today out. I guess you can see that too. But the river's all frozen over. Well, not all frozen over, but you know, you get it. We are at the pawpaw tree incident sign. Uh, uh, well, at the incident site, I guess the sign's here too, you could say. But uh, uh, this episode is a result of the August 1882 election day fight. Tolbert, a son of Randolph McCoy exchanged heated words with Ellison Hatfield, which started a fight. Tolbert, Farmer, and Randall McCoy Jr. stabbed Ellison to death. Later, the three brothers were captured by the Hatfield clan, tied to pawpaw trees, and shot in retaliation. Now, uh, in a lot of our, in some of our other videos, we've touched on a little bit of the, the Mate One, or not the Mate One Massacre, the, uh, the hog trial cabin. Uh, you know, some of the events that happened there and that sort of thing with Ellison getting stabbing, which, you know, the sign just mentioned right there. The Hatfields, they retaliated. They grabbed three McCoy boys and uh, they brought them down here and they killed them. One of the things I wanted to mention today, you know, since I got your attention, uh, sometimes, you know, when you're doing this sort of thing, something new, a new little piece of information can come along and it causes you to rethink everything. Well, if this is true, then that means all this other stuff, you know, associated with it is also wrong. So, and court documents, uh, I would imagine, you know, we'll, we'll accept court documents as being a clarifying thing. Uh, we now have, we have in our possession, uh, they're in the car right now, as a matter of fact, uh, documents from the deposition from the the hearing one of the hearings uh, related to this uh, two of the guys that were down here that would imply that the third boy the young one which everyone you know knows is you know was supposedly innocent was killed here there is new information you know it's not really widely known so we don't you know we usually generally we try to stick to the tried and true but there is new information kind of come to light that maybe one of the boys grabbed was the wrong one entirely. You see, the two youngest boys, there were two of them, and they looked almost identical. Uh, the neighbors, as a matter of fact, couldn't tell the kids apart. And supposedly, when they were down here, there's rumors that they may have even had the wrong boy entirely. You see, at the cabin, and we've, you know, we've showed you the cabin, it's right down there. At the cabin, the hog trial cabin, uh, the st when Ellison was stabbed, supposedly, you know, by the three boys, there's stories floating around that uh, 
you know, one of the boys was just, the youngest boy was just handed the knife after the fact. And that when he came back to the cabin, that he had the knife in his hand and, you know, blah, 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 he did it. So, you know, and you never really 100% know for sure, you know, because there was, there was, they tried, they went out of their way. You know, the Hatfields did try to go out of their way to, you know, get their story straight. And we'll be showing you some of the deposition stuff here too. But, uh, you know, it's very interesting, you know, that after all of these years, you know, that you can still find something new about this stuff. You think you know it all, but you don't. You never, it seems like you never do. The minute you think you know it all is when you're the wrongest. So, you know, you keep that in mind, move forward. But anyhow, just wanted to swing by here, show you this place. It's a beautiful little spot. Just down here by the river, just across the bridge from Mate One. Mate One is right over there. It's a little mini mall uh, right there. Uh, by the way, Heather, the school was supposedly right there where the mini mall is. We were we were talking about that. Just found that out today, right in the middle of the parking lot. So, <laughs> but anyhow, it's nice and cold. It's the, well, let's just say freezing. It's not cold. It's freezing. <laughs> but anyhow, we're gonna load up. I'm gonna load up and head on down here just in a second. I'm gonna head down by the uh, the old graveyard, uh, down by Randall McCoy's house and uh, show you the, some of the stuff down there, some of the sites down there, and uh, tell you a little bit more about it. The Forbidden Cemetery in Hardy, Kentucky is where Tolbert McCoy, 28 years old, Farmer McCoy, 19, and Randolph Jr., who was 18, were laid to rest after being killed in the pawpaw tree incident. It's also the final resting place of 30-year-old Alifair McCoy, who was killed during the New Year's Eve raid in 1888. This is the murder for which Cottontop Mount eventually faced the gallows, despite persistent rumors and even testimony in court that Cap Hatfield, Devoyance's son, was actually the one who pulled the trigger. Calvin McCoy, who was 26 years old, was also killed during this New Year's Eve raid. Unfortunately, the McCoy Cemetery, the Forbidden Cemetery, is not something we can just go up and visit any time as you can see by the sign. There is a marker that Pike County gave to put at the McCoy Cemetery and it's supposedly up there. Now this here is the Forbidden Cemetery. Hang on, there's a couple cars coming. We're right beside the road here. Just a second. Let them get by. Like we told you, we're not going to do a whole lot, you know, leave a lot of it in the description, you know, the historical aspects, all that sort of thing. But just wanted to come out today. It's a blustery cold day. Like I said, it's it's cold. It's We just got into double digits. <laughs> but anyhow, there is a, um, there's a, a statue, a memorial that was put up there years ago. Uh, they have a sign here, the property owners, and, you know, it's their land. You know, you can do whatever you want, you know, your land. But uh, they have a sign here. Hang on. Those related to the McCoy children buried in the McCoy Cemetery may visit on Memorial Day weekend and the third weekend of September each year. No parking will be allowed on property. While doing so, uh, we reserve to write the right to ask for proof of descendancy and time to verify it. This is within the court rulings concerning private cemetery visitation. Private trespassers will be prosecuted. Limited access, no tours. <laughs> but uh, my understanding there was, you know, well, there's not really a whole heck of a lot of space, you know, to park. So I guess I, you know, I give them that one. You know, I, I can see that, you know, you whole bunch of tourists, you know, coming in, wanting to park in your driveway and, you know, see a historical site or, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, being descendants, uh, you know, myself being a descendant, we're going to get a hold of them sometime, you know, this spring and see about going up and checking out the graveyard, maybe, you know, clean it up. We're going to, you know, run it by them, you know, make sure everything's on the up and up. If it needs cleaned up, for all I know, it may be immaculate. I, I don't know. Anyway, just thought we'd stop by here for just a minute and show you this. 
Like I said, we're just across the street from Randall's house. And let these cars go, and I'll walk up there and show you the old home place where Randall and his wife and children where they lived. We'll get across the road here without getting ran over. Pretty busy for a snow day. I think, like I said, it's about, um, I think the car said 12 degrees and the wind will cut you in half. <laughs> it is cool, <laughs> that's for sure. Anyhow, you can see I had to park up here where you park at to go to see Randall's house. Uh, you know, the old well site. They have designated parking you know, where you can pull up and park and just walk across the street. And the current owner, uh, current owners, I should say, there's two, uh, who live side by side. And they're both really cool guys. You know, they'll come out and you know, tell you stories and stuff like that. <laughs> just really cool. It's really cool. It just, it's like everyone around who's even remotely related, you know, pretty much supports the historical aspects of it and tourism and trails and all that sort of thing. Another car coming up behind me cross your fingers and hope for the best, right? <laughs> well, I can't cross my fingers because they're frozen. And right there you can see the sign <coughs> for the old Randall McCoy's home, his old home place. It was right back there in that little valley. And you can see where it goes, how the valley kind of comes down and goes back up. That's where his house was, right back there. But you know, you can kind of imagine, back in the day, use your imagination a little bit. This place just being nothing but vegetation. A little dirt, skinny dirt road. It was all horse and buggy, all that kind of thing. None of these houses were here, obviously. And over the years, it's just been parceled out a little piece at a time. So you got a house there, house there, and house there. Let me get off the road here real quick. Okay. And Randall's place was right directly back there. And we showed you that place a couple times. Took you back there and showed you the well and told you stories and stuff like that. But we hadn't done this aspect of it yet. So we figured cold weather or not, we'd come out and get you the video. Something to something to check out when you're inside the house. Froze half to death. Can't get out. <laughs> we'll get out and do the freezing for you. You guys stay in there and stay warm. <laughs> but these two guys here, uh, this one, one of them's named Bob. I think Bob lives there. I think that's him there. And this guy here, he's got... A lot of memorabilia in his garage right there and you know they're they're both really good guys you know you can come down and park here and go over and check out Randall McCoy's old home site and if you catch them you know if you catch either of them out you know they'll tell you old stories and stuff they're really cool both of them are but yeah really cool place all right anyhow <sighs> moving on let's get in out of the cold get in some heat imagine five of your children being shot to death. Just think about that. Rest in peace, Tolbert, Farmer, Randolph Jr., Calvin, and Alifair. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Until next time, this is the Hillbilly Finest.